Welcome back to America Trends, everybody. I want to remind you that we're working on your health today. In just a little while, we have Dr. Kian Vu coming in talking about epigenetics. Now, this is something where you, through your environment, your food, whatever, can help your genes um, sort of rework themselves, gene therapy for better health. He can explain it perfectly. He's an expert in this. He's gonna break it down for us. But first on America Trends tonight, we love to talk to people who love animals. And um, Victoria Pace from TriBeagles.org out of North Carolina sure is one of them. Um, that is a breed specific rescue in North Carolina, of course, shown here. They're a tax exempt organization, all volunteer. Victoria herself has fostered 13 dogs is an, and is a passion of a passionate animal rights advocate. Welcome to the show, Victoria. Thank you so much. And you're pretty young too. You, so you've done, you've helped a lot of dogs in just a short time. Thank you for your work. Oh, well, thank you so much. Um, there are some challenges that come along with being a little bit on the younger side and fostering a lot of beagles or dogs in general, but I do really love it so much, so it comes easy. According to the ASPCA, 3.2 million people adopt a rescue pet every year. Thumbs up to them because it is really, uh, I feel like they're doing God's work because I always feel like we are the ones who overbreed these dogs. Then they end up in a rescue, a shelter, a pound, and it's our doing and we do not most many people do nothing but you are doing a lot and the thing I love about rescue too is you guys drop everything at a moment's notice to go help don't you absolutely there have been so many times that we've gotten alerts from the rescue saying hey we have this dog it can be states away we're based in North Carolina and they might have dogs in Virginia I myself have gone one day to go and pick up two dogs that really needed to get out of a shelter. Um, a lot of times pregnant female dogs that come along, really the people in the rescue come together and people will drop whatever they're doing to make sure that these dogs are able to get the help that they need. Because you go pick them up, you take them to the vet right away, you pay the money for all that, you get them into a foster home, the person takes time out from doing that and all the administrative work, it's, it's a lot, isn't it? It absolutely is. And I mean, the vet work sometimes can be a huge range of things. Just to use the dog that I have right now as an example, his name is Jackson. He's an older beagle. He is blind and they thought had congestive heart failure when he first came into the rescue. And Triangle Beagle Rescue really does whatever they can in order to make sure that these dogs are living healthy lives. So this dog had heartworms the one vet said that he probably wasn't healthy enough to receive heartworm treatment so triangle beagle rescue took him to a cardiologist a heart specialist at nc state vet hospital in raleigh to make sure that he was that we were doing everything that we could and they said that he was okay for heartworm treatment so we went through with that but it's a lot of money a lot of coordination to make sure that all of that happens and that's just one example for one pet i urge you to go to trybeagles.org if you can possibly give or if you can take a dog into your home or whatever rescue you're near, whatever dogs you love. I have Weimaraner Honor rescue dogs that I've had for years and I would never do another thing. I always say, Victoria, that anyone who wants to breed dogs should probably volunteer with a rescue or to shelter for a month or two and then, then decide. But I do want to get to the tips that you give people once they bring a new dog into the home, especially a rescue dog. And the first thing to remember is the dog is scared. It's a big change. It is, it is a huge change for these dogs. They might have never been in a home at all before. So I think that I always tell the adoptive parents to always be prepared to make a few changes in their home um, early on, you know, making sure that the dog maybe isn't on any carpeted areas or around any valuables for the first couple of days as you learn its temperament and how well-trained it is and things like that. Right, because really, though we fell in love with the dog, I'm sure, at the shelter, we really don't know how he'll react to a new environment. So you do have to learn your dog's personality, right? 
Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, some dogs are going to be maybe very hyper and playful and they might chew up their bed the first day that they get home. Some of them might be absolutely terrified and you can't get them out from under the bed for two days or something like that. You know, even what how a dog acts inside of the shelter might be completely different than how it's gonna act once it gets home. And the dog will need training, so prepare for that. And we have to train ourselves on what that's all about. Yes, definitely. I have learned a lot in my few years working with foster dogs uh, with resource training and how to teach trust to these animals and how to teach them, you know, even the basics, sit, stay, lay down, things like that. It's a lot of learning for both the human and the animal, for sure. And the other thing that's interesting, when you bring that new dog home, you need to get, let that dog get the lay of the land. Don't parade him to dog parks. Don't bring in a bunch of strangers. Set him up for success and give him time to get acclimated with you and the family. Absolutely. I think easing into it is really the best way to do it. Um, you know, the same as a person who might move to a new place, you're probably going to get to know your immediate surroundings before you start traveling out away from your neighborhood and things like that. So the same thing for dogs, having a couple of days at home in a pretty standard routine is going to be the best to help that dog learn your routine and learn your family. What is the best way to introduce a new dog to the other pets you already have? That's actually a very good question for me because my dog does not always like the fosters that I bring home. So usually doing it in an open area, I'm lucky enough to have a fenced in backyard. It's not required, I don't think, in order to own a dog, but it can be very helpful. So having a fenced in backyard, usually I'll let them interact out there, meet there for the first time. So then they have some space to run around and it's kind of a neutral playing field for everyone. Yeah, neutral is very important to remember that way in the pecking order, one dog doesn't think he has dominion over the other right away and they can sort it out. Yes, definitely. Um, a lot of times the dogs that have been in the home for a while might think of themselves as being alphas unless you know that your dog isn't that. So giving them that neutral playing field is really important. So your dog will get to know you and eventually your dog will love you. Oh, always. I have never had a foster dog that there wasn't a mutual feeling of love after a few months together. Oh, that's wonderful. You know what, Victoria, we appreciate your talking to us and we appreciate all the work you do. We ask that people, again, go to trybeagles.org, check them out, see if you can scan through the dog, see if there's one that, and you do go, um, they do uh, transport state to state, um, but if you can give financially too, that would be a big help. Victoria, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Amy. It's been great today. You too. We hope to see you again soon. We're back with Dr. Kian Vu after this. Is every step you take like stepping on tacks? That tingling, burning, pins and needles sensation is so painful. When you suffer from transient nerve pain, it can ruin your day. Now get